Last round was a doozy to say the very least. And the, one of the best races and one of the craziest finishes in the history of the Big C's MX-5 Challenge. Robert Hartley was able to dodge multiple ranking cars in the final turn at Circuit of Spa Francochamps to come away with his second victory this season. For the top drivers in the series, they'll be looking to feed their need for speed this afternoon. Today, they look to tackle this historic circuit and the true temple of speed. And we'll see today's action from green flag to checker flag on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Welcome everyone to today's edition of the GTR Countdown to Green. Live from the virtual Monza Ini Circuit in Monza, Italy for round six of season four on Big C's MX-5 Challenge. I'm Justin Prince alongside of the booth today is Ryan Jones. Behind the scenes is our director Sean Ambrose and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beer. Today's free race coverage is presented by GTR Simulator. GTR's racing simulators are currently used as training aids for professional race car drivers. You too can learn to ace that braking, sharpen those corners, and shave off those vital seconds. Whether you're a professional driver or a gamer looking for a more immersive way to play, GTR has your back. Get started today at GTRSimulator.com. Now, what is the best way to tackle this circuit? Let's take a look at your GSRC lap guide to find out. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Monza. Coming down the front stretch, this is the longest straight into the heaviest braking zone. The Retafilo Chicane is obviously a great place to try a pass, but it certainly offers some dangers. First of all, the track narrows on the approach. And as you can see, it's extremely tight at the corner itself. So getting in side by side usually doesn't end well. Plus, those big sausage curbs can really upset the car if you hit them too hard. So make those overtakes with a bit of caution. After that, you've got the long, gentle bend to the right that is Curva Grando. This is flat out all the way until Della Rogia. So once again, the draft is going to come into play. Don't be too surprised to see drivers drift to the outside of this turn to take away the inside line into the chicane. There's a lot of paved runoff to help save you when you overshoot your braking, but the sleeping policeman and the slowdown penalty should really make you wary of cutting the course even if by mistake. On exit, watch out for the gravel trap. Expect a lot of gunk to get dragged onto the track from there. Now we hit the first Lesmo. There's a lot of banking, but try not to come into the corner too shallow. As you come off the corner, hold left to set up for the second Lesmo. This one is a lot sharper than the first, and you can be much more aggressive on the inside curb. It's pretty important to keep your momentum up, especially in this underpowered Miata. This isn't the longest stretch of the circuit, but it's very easy to botch your exit and leave yourself vulnerable down into the Ascari chicane. It's bad enough that you gotta worry about the slipstream, but you definitely don't want to give your opponent a free pass. Now this chicane is pretty different from the first two. It's faster and it has three distinct apexes. You'll try to hold tight on the first one to give a nice wide arc into the second. Once again, stay right up to the edge of the course and then swing it through the last one. That last left hand apex should be flat out if you nailed it just right. From there, drift back across to the left side of the track and take a moment to breathe. Coming up is the Parabolica. You'd think a 180 degree hairpin would make a great place to pass, but really, if you're smart, you should set up your run off the turn. This is a deceptively fast corner, so it's already more difficult to outbreak someone. And then, the draft is so powerful, all they have to do is stay behind you and take the position right back on the pit straight. That's where being patient can pay off if you simply wait and slingshot by before Retifilo. But hopefully you haven't gotten tangled up with another car amidst all the chicanes, so take some time to wave to the Tifosi and finish your lap around Monza. That's a look at your GSRC lap guide as you take a look at the Minions car. Let's bring in our co-announcer for today, Ryan Jones. Ryan, what else can you tell us about the Monza Ini circuit, which will be the backdrop for this round? I can tell you I love that livery. <laughs> um, if you'd asked me at the start of the season which track I was most looking forward to, this would have been my answer. Monza. It's famed for its high-speed nature. It proudly carries that moniker of Temple of Speed. But these MX-5s aren't that quick. And so today, we're going to see plenty of uh, MX-5 trains snaking their way down these long straights as uh, the drivers fight to get some of that toe and slipstream. There's going to be plenty of late braking maneuvers in the 11 corners we've got on this track today, 5.3 kilometers in length as well. And uh, you've got to watch out for those corners. They're all, they're all famous corners at Monza, Ascari, Parabolica, the two Lesmos, and um, of course the Chicanes. They're going to provide some big drama today. 
as the field congestion, the old Cosentina effect, as they all close up at each other in the braking zone. The opening lap, especially, is going to be very hairy, especially until that first chicane which you just saw on screen in the background. I have a feeling, though, Justin, today's race, it's going to give us a damn good run for last week. Yeah, it's going to be an entertaining race, absolutely. The first race here in this series history, mind you, seen a crazy start to the event. Second race, seeing Robert Hartley come away with the W. Speaking of Hartley, let's take a look at the driver's standings because he's on top of that board coming into today's round with two victories on the season. He's right now over top Jaume Damasas Torres in the standings by 26 points. Clifford Evan rounds out the top three with 66 total points, 34 points behind. Christian Lindroff moved himself into fourth position after a fifth place one last week. Well, Logan Clampett is in the field for today. He's in his first event in two rounds. He missed the last two events on the calendar. Gonna be glad to see the E NASCAR peak in every Eye Racing Series driver. Top five in the standings. Look to try and see if he can fight to get higher up. But let's take a look at your race details for today, Ryan, as you follow along with Clampett. Well, this is round six of nine. We're starting to get down to that business end of the championship where the uh, focus for some of the championship contenders will shift towards that bigger picture, maybe. The race length, it's your standard 40-minute length race. Thick setups, as always. Normal regulations we've seen all series long with that incident cap at 20. Two fascia pairs for these drivers to work with as well. And points paying from first only down to 15th in the 60-odd car field. Indeed, Robert Hartley already fourth in the qualifying board at the moment. Let's take a moment as we see this exact racing machine to work its way around the track to talk about the track conditions. Fairly cool, 78 degrees Fahrenheit, 81 degrees, as well as your qualifying details provided by SHH Shifter for today. Four laps of qualifying, 15 minutes in the session, lone qualifying for these drivers to ensure the best starting position. And based on the series' history at Monza, track position, vitally important. In a practice race about just an hour or so ago, a lot of drivers in the 10s to 20s were involved with incidents. The top eight eventually broke away in just the 10 laps on the circuit. Yeah, track position is going to be key, isn't it? And not only that, but positioning yourself on the track after qualifying is also going to be just as key. Because if you don't get that breakaway, you're going to see a lot of cars struggle to pull out pull out in front. But that first chicane, that big um, sort of Costantina effect you see where they all close up, if you're in the mid-pack, there's a very high likelihood of yourself being involved in an accident. And um, this is probably one of the most crucial qualifiers of the season. Indeed, right now a full 60 car grid for today. Already 50 drivers with qualifying times in the 214s. All the way down to the 218 so far in the session. But as we work our way towards the midpoint of qualifying here, there is an important cause we want to talk about here, Ryan, and especially with what's happening in Australia. Yes, uh, no doubt. As probably many of you are likely aware by now, Australia is suffering from unprecedented bushfires, of which we've never seen before. Um, the majority of which are on the east coast where millions of hectares are burning across hundreds of fires in New South Wales and Victoria. And I, I guess it goes without saying that the effect of this, both human and the wildlife impact, is, is unspeakable. And it's only getting worse too as the, uh, the season continues. There are key organisations though involved in the protection of uh, the country's um, infrastructure and, and natural resources and whatnot. Um, and they are welcoming donations. They are much needed donations too. Um, I will link the, the links to the Rural Fire Service and the Worldwide Fund for Nature in the live chat and in the comments below at the end of the video too. Um, and if you would like to spare just a couple of dollars, anything helps to uh, donate to these causes because at the moment they really need your help. And um, yeah. Australia is uh, struggling a bit and it's a bit of a disaster zone and it's actually been declared a state of emergency too in uh, both of those states so just um, it's close to my heart so it's something I wanted to make sure was um, well talked about Justin. I'm glad we got the chance to talk about that especially since it's so close to you personally and to many different drivers on the iRacing service. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak about that for a moment here. As you look now at Dylan Holt, one of the proximity racing machines, 
Let's talk about the championship picture. We've seen the point standings entering today. Some drivers have already used their two drops essentially here, but with only a couple rounds left to go here, Ryan, not a lot of room for error here. What are some of the things to keep in mind here for the drivers in the hunt for the title? Um, keep your car on the track is uh, probably the number one thing. It goes without saying. But the, the reason I say that is because at the end of these straights, these cars are at their maximum speed. And you're braking as well, so there is no room for error. If you miss your braking marker by 20 meters, and or if you miss your braking marker by half a second, you're going at you know the max speed, 200 kilometers an hour in these cars, you're going straight off the end. And when the racing is so tight, you cannot afford those mistakes. There's not really any areas in the track where you are going to run wide. Ascari is probably the biggest one, though. If you run wide through Ascari, you're going to hurt yourself. Um, onto the penultimate straight on the run to Parabolica and you'll lose a handful of spots there too so it's all about being pinpoint accurate as it so always is but um, Monta isn't the most difficult track in terms of uh, in that regard though couple things to keep in mind too as well right now as you follow along with Van Opstra at the moment for qualifying Maxim Bonovic is at the top of the board with the 214.566 Followed by Vicente Salas, a member of Underground Racing Esports. Juan Manuel Fernandez is in third. Hartley and Excite Racing is in fourth. And Jesse T. Stevens in the 36 machine rounds out the top five in qualifying. They're separated by just six tenths of a second with 56 drivers already setting qualifying times here. It's going to be tight as you follow along here with Liam Sheen as he gets ready for his first lap up on the board in the double zero. <laughs> We've uh, just changed to the, uh, I can't quite see who that is, sorry. Um, we just changed to Robert Hartley, I didn't think so there. My, uh, my eyesight fails me. I shouldn't be doing that. I'm too young for that. Um, he's heading down that penultimate straight now towards Parabolica. He is on his final lap of uh, qualifying as well. His current best is 215.034. He's currently fourth in the session, which isn't too bad. He's half a second adrift of Max and Bunovic, and he's going to take quite a shallow exit actually from Parabolic. You often see drivers take their cars all the way out to the white line on the left. He did not opt to do so and it does not appear to have helped him because a 15-2 he doesn't improve your position in this qualifying session. In practice he was about a couple tenths quicker with the help of draft. This time we'll start still in the mix of the lead group as some other drivers are finishing up their times or have already completed multiple circuits around the racetrack, about two minutes or so until the grid. I'd like to remind you, today's starting grid is presented by Sim Racing Studio. Want to enhance your sim racing experience but don't feel like spending hours doing it? Sim Racing Studio creates plug-in race sim racing accessory software to enhance your experience without any DIY effort. Go to simracingstudio.com for more information. As the last of cars set themselves up for the grid, what are your keys to victory today, Ryan? Stay out of trouble. <laughs> if you're in that mid-pack, it's uh, a bit of potluck to stay out of trouble. If you're starting out front, do not make any mistakes. Do not put yourself at a risk where you could get involved in that mid-pack scramble and uh, be taken out by unfortunate incidents. So that, and make sure you're in the right spot at the right time. If it does come down to a slipstreaming finish, which um, seems quite likely at this track, Making sure you're not the first person heading down that straight towards Parabolica. What mm. on earth just happened there is I, uh, important. <laughs> uh, Shane Cameron. I believe that was Cameron, one of the huge-ass machines that had some trouble in their qualifying. They were one of the drivers that completed most of their laps already. But one driver that's looking to complete theirs, just ducking into the pit lane now. In the final 30 seconds or so in this session... The pace is mightily quick, we should note again in qualifying. The top 20 separated by just 1.1 seconds up on the board for today's race. It's very close in the entire field, in fact. It's a 218.5 final car, so only 4 seconds covering 56 people, which is um, probably more impressive than 1 second covering 20, because that means... The entire field is uh, incredibly tight. It's something we noted before the broadcast went to air, Justin. The strength of field for this race is 3,000. 
Strong strength for today. Let's take a look at how they will start today on the Sim Racing Studios starting grid. Your pole sitter, Maxim Bonovic, with a 214.566. Starting on the outside front row, Vicente Salas with a 214.718. Then Logan Clampett, the E-NASCAR PK and Freeze Racing Series driver, starts third, followed by Juan Manuel Fernandez and Robert Hartley round out the top five. Artie Hyrule starts in sixth, Jesse T. Stevens in seventh, with Brandon Hawken looking to have a good run for Movano Sim racing in eighth. Jose Soria in ninth while Christopher Taylor rounds out your top ten, Ryan. DJ Ellis injury starts from 11th, had a uh, John Torres in 12th. Summon X starts in 13th, had a Lindroff and Travis Wallace in 15th. Johnny Hagner 16th and 17th with uh, Dylan Alt there and rounding out the top 20 is James Sharp, Stephen Van Opstel and uh, Clifford Even. Nico Arwe Blomey starting in 21st, Nicholas Berger in 22nd, with Takuro Kanako in the iRacing Machine 23rd. Nicholas O'Short, one of the contenders last week in 24th, starting with Kenny Brady 25th. Caleb P Patry in 26th, with Owen Watts' 851 Machine 27th. His teammate starts 28th, and Jonas Seeger. Alex Albert starts in 29th, with Neil Senkowski rounding up the top 30. Alex Kofard, Jackson Robillard, 31st, 32nd, Adam Mariak, 33rd, with um, Esco, 34th, Justin Tyler and uh, Thomas Geiser, 35th and 36th, and assignment airfolding, 37th, Trent Blizzy, Fernando Signoretto in 38th and 39th, Justin Hall rounds out the top 40. Nico Kako starts in 41st with Pedro and Pietro Magola, I should rather say, in 42nd, Sam Devantier in 43rd in the Minions Machine with Kip Stevens in 44th. Pablo Loves in 45th with George Fike, 46th. Louise Mogra in 20, 47th. Shane Cameron, 48th. Michael Derby, 49th. 50th, Fabian Ponce. Rest of the grid will roll up on your screen for the 60 drivers today. They're all set to go to get the green lights here at Monza Ini Circuit. Maxim Bunovic will bring them down to the green flag and the Auto Sport merch machine. Green flag is waving. We're underway for Monza. Sixty plus drivers work their way into the first quarter as they look to fight for position early on. Estimated 18 laps the distance as we're four wide heading into the first chicane. Cars are crashing in trouble just on the edge of the top ten. Multiple drivers hit the brakes, but the rest of the league group gets going clean throughout the top ten. It only looks as if a couple of cars have uh, had incidents in that first quarter. All they're still crashing now to the exit of turn two. It's um, the usual mid-pack shenanigans there through the first chicane, but crucially, the front of the field, the guys that put the cars at the front near the pole have got away cleanly, and Budovic is the guy that continues to lead them as a result of that. He's uh, got the lead over Vicente Salas, who's right up his bumper there in second. Third for Fernandez, Logan Clampett had a bit of a checkup through the uh, second chicane and almost got rear-ended by Hartley and Clamp is off the track. He's made a mistake for the first place where there's contact with Hartley who uh, has to take evasive action down to the inside oh. and Clamp is off and into the fence. He's got big damage to that car. And Clamp is already off the racetrack electing to send it immediately to the garage area after the bad run to the second Lesmos as now they work their way towards Ascari. Already a total of about 10 drivers involved with incidents but Sal is one of the top drivers in the practice race. Still fighting up at the front in the end of this first lap. Fernandez still in the third position. They pulled a bit of a distant gap over the OTR machine of Hyro. Hawkin, Hartley are in the second group as well. As majority of the drivers trouble for Alessandrini. He is stopped in Ascari at the moment. He was in 11th position at the starting grid. Multiple drivers are also having trouble as the lead group makes their way through Parabolga. A lot of drivers are sliding a lot more than we usually see on the first lap thanks to the cold tires because of how high speed most of these corners are the cold tires are affecting them just a little bit more and that's why we're seeing so many incidents here as now we head down the main straight for the first time Budovic has lost the lead to Vicante Salas and um, now they're bump drafting their way down the main straight Salas doesn't look like he's going to be overtaken by Bunovic. It looks like Fernandez is going to try to go the long way around, and he outbreaks him, but right in the middle of turn one, that was about as close as you want to get. I think they may have traded paint, but no real contact between them it was incredibly close. Good move from Fernandez. 
There was a little bit of left front damage, though. If you look towards the edge of that headlight, you'll see the hood a little bit pushed up there. We do have already one penalty given to Fabian Ponce for the trouble on the first lap. But Budovic now with some aerodynamic damage. One thing to note for Sal is, and this is tough to do at Mons in my opinion, he led a majority of the laps, all but just a couple. Ryan, in the practice race, Budovic was the fastest driver in practice for that same session. Was Hartley tries to make a move behind them, you see him trying to make a dive. Christopher Taylor is the driver that's just behind him. Hartley has to let him go. Hartley got to slow down. He jumped all the way across the inside curb of the second chicane. Gave him a slowdown, which has cost him about four or five positions now. He was running in front of Brendan Hawken, the head of the second train of cars, just off the uh, trio that leads the race. Looks like he's finally managed to get it cleared now, and he slots in just in front of um, Delmas to Torres there and he is going to be in 8th place now. Should note Nico Kako as well as Kenny Brady made contact. That sent Kako right to the garage area. The drivers currently lined up single file in the lead group separated by 2 seconds the first 2 groups in this race so far. Just approaching 5 minutes into the racing action and this has already been a wild start for everybody outside the top 5 essentially where there's been already a lot of attrition for some of the big names. Certainly has, and we've seen Logan Clampett made his return after two weeks' absence. Uh, he made it all of about a lap, or not even a lap before he had to disconnect as a result of a big incident, as um, hopefully we don't see any more big casualties because the championship fight is uh, well and truly alive, provided they all stay in the race as Salas again gets a bump draft, this time not from Budovic, but from Fernandez, and this time it's Budovic getting close to the rear bumper, heading into turn one, as they all try to find the absolute limit of the brakes, as uh, we go back to P10 now, this is uh, Joel Hagner, Joni Hagner, sorry, and Dylan Alt, they're separated by about a bumper, heading through Curva Grande. Looking at the fight right now, this is technically for the 11th position at the moment. As right now, all from Proximity Racing, one of the drivers who took part in the eNASCAR Ignite Series, looking to make the fight, taking a little bit of a tighter line that time through the rumble strips, through the second variant, through the, for the Della Raggia that time. But just can't get the run quite yet. Not in one of the passing zones to make a move yet. Losing some time here in Sector 2. Yeah, he is. Uh, well, we'll continue to watch this. I'll just point out that the top three are slowly starting to be caught by Brennan Organ and Ari Harum as well. So that battle at the front is uh, slowly closing in. So that's going to be fantastic. In a couple laps, we're going to go on board with Ari Harrow now. He is the number 11 man, and he's running in fourth place. That's the trio of cars that lead the race in front of him. Behind him, he's uh, got pressure from Brendan Hawken, who uh, is very experienced, and I suspect will probably push him, as that's a car in the fence on the left-hand side, down the uh, down the straight. I wonder what's happened to him. I dare say he's probably got a bit of oversteer off the exit of Ascari, and uh, found himself in the fence there, but luckily he stayed out of the way of the leaders as they made their way past. Looked like it was Alex Cofford, pardon me, that was someone else, pardon me, there that was stopped along there for a decent bit, it appeared, in terms of trouble. Most of the team for Hugh Johnson, unfortunately, a rough start. But should note, remember that draft between the first and second groups was two seconds a couple laps ago? Well, Ari Haro, as well as Brandon Hawken, working a second quicker. Last time by, they've made it a five-car battle for the race lead, as you see that group. And uh, Pal Simonek as well just slotted himself into the uh, head of the third train that's um, very close to the back of the big train now. And I, th I think in about three corners time it's all going to be one big train going all the way back to about 10th, 11th, maybe even 14th place. Nicholas Berger, the last car just off the uh, back end, he might just lose the draft though. It's certainly got the potential to be a big uh, train of cars. Alex Coffard, you can see, or just saw on the screen, having his own issues. Three Curva Grande off all the way towards the barriers as they uh, 
sank their way around the back of the track. Let's look at P12. Yeah, that is still an odd at the moment, still holding on to that position, losing some time to the Glacier Racing Machine of Hagner up in front. But he is under pressure from Steven Van Ostra, who looks to keep up with this league group. Everybody in the 214s that close to the leaders last time by. Van Ostra in, in one of the Ashbury Motorsports machine. Looking to get a good finish today. It's been an up and down season for the 44 machine. This might be the chance to have a positive end to the season. We can start building momentum starting now. Yes, yeah, certainly will be. He's not in the top 10 of the championship as a result of that, and um, <coughs> you would suspect that championship hopes and aspirations are gone, but there's always pride to play for individual achievements. Maybe he can crack into the top 10 with a good result here. Maybe he can uh, benefit some, some, from some potential craziness here in this race and steal a podium finish, maybe even a race win. It's um, often what you see in a championship. If you're not fighting for a championship, the drivers that aren't often fight even harder because they've got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, up in front of them, Hartley wants to get back by Christopher Taylor. Taylor had made a move in the past lap for the Winding Road Racing Machine, but to his side, as you look from the door, Hartley wants to get the position back side by side down the front straightaway in towards the first chicane. The speed though going to Taylor. He's got the draft of Semenic as well as from behind from Torres. Hartley forced to back off while Torres forced to check up a little bit harder as Hartley moves back to the racing line. And Torres in ninth position at the moment here. Started in the 12th position. Does have a little bit of aerial damage himself we should note. On that left side that's going to make it interesting for him, one of the few drivers that got some damage in the early first lap or two of this race. Just behind them in 12th place is some side-by-side -side action. Uh, Nicholas Berger and Dylan Alt. They almost made contact, hanging through Curva Grande and finally into Della Roggia. Nicholas Berger's going to pull ahead as Opstel almost drove into the right rear there of Dylan Alt's car just managed to avoid it, may have picked up a slowdown for his troubles there. Nicholas Berger moves his way up now into 12th place, he was 14th a couple of laps ago, so he's making progress. It's a plus 10 for him overall, he started 22nd, but it's been a good quiet run for the Viking France driver. At this point though, he's going to need to hope he can catch the back end of the draft, he's just outside the slipstream of Hagner in the rest of the lead group here. You're, do you work with the drivers behind you, or do you try and just focus on your marks and try and pull away from, say, an Alt or Alt and Van Alstro, knowing you might be the fastest of the three? You're going to pull ahead of them and hope that the, uh, your slipstream keeps them with you and they can push you down these straights and they don't try to pass you back and you can all work together to catch them. It's often helpful to have the fast car out front. You can drag those slower cars with them as um, it's now officially a 10 car train as they make their way onto the main straight. A little bit further back is the battle for 18th place. This is Owen, what, 17th, sorry. Yes. This is uh, Jonas Serger, and there's Owen Watts in 18th, Jackson Robillard in 19th, Travis Wallace, Kaneko, all involved in this battle pack for the, uh, the fringes of the top 20. The reason why this battle could be so important is right now they're about five seconds behind the battle for points between Eben and Arby Lomi at the moment. If they keep hooked up essentially, especially since 17th and 18th are teammates, they might be really in. Meanwhile, up towards the front, things are getting interesting. Fernandez feeling some pressure. Bunovic just got by to get up to the point. Salas also got through. They're near three wide for third position as they work their way down the straight. Budovic, oh, sorry, Fernandez, he got loose coming off turn two, uh, caught the gravel on the outside of the circuit, and that's what's cost him the lead and second place in this race. Now he finds himself under pressure from Ari Harrow and Brendan Hawkin behind them as well as Pavel Simonek. The list goes on, but Fernandez now has got a rally. He's got about a seven-car length gap between himself and Salas in front of him. Budovic has got about four car lengths on, on him in tow, so if Salas can hook up to Bunovic, there's a, a Bunovic, there's a slight chance that they might be able to break away if Fernandez doesn't respond quickly. 
Here's the thing, though. They're going to have to start dealing with lap traffic. They already have Kip Stevens in the Ritz. In the Ritz Cracker Machine. Up in front of them, our first lap traffic of the race for these drivers. Oh, uh, it could make it interesting to see where Stevens goes. You see him in that red machine. In the racing line at the moment, will he move? No, he does not. Bunovic with the tight pass on the left side of the 29 machine. That is 49th place that stayed on the bottom that time and now is in the middle of the slipstream of the lead pack. Fernandez uh, will be happy about that. He's getting a bit of a slipstream off Kip Stevens there, as did Maxon Bunovic. Luckily here, Monza's not a tight and twisty circuit. It's uh, relatively easy for lapped cars to get out of the way on these straights as long as you hold your line. Only awkward bit is if you uh, get caught in the braking zone for one of these corners and you don't get out of the way, you could have uh, a bit of a checkup occurring behind you if you're a lapped car through the uh, the chicanes or the lesmos, uh, especially there as they're quite tight one lane corners. And all this contact behind! Yep. Who was that? I didn't quite catch it. Not quite sure. Hartley making some moves you've seen there. A little bit of aero damage now for the 33 as he tried to dive. Just barely avoided hitting some cars. He did for part of the corner, but he tried to dive hard to get by Christopher Taylor as well as cross up Harlow, oh, who dropped from Ford. He's now side drafting the Continental sponsored machine and makes the move on the inside, heading into turns four and five. Behind them, Taylor went in incredibly deep to the first part of the Della Roja, and that's cost him on the exit, because Torres is going to try to get down to his inside now for the first of the two Lesmos. Won't complete the move just yet. They're going to go side by side, and behind them, Joel Hagner, Joni Hagner, sorry, is going to look for a way through. Can't find it, and finally for the second of the two Lesmos, through goes Torres, and now Hagner can capitalize and go side by side. And he too is going to drag Lindroff with him. And this could be a very costly mistake here for Taylor. It might cost him three spots. Yes, indeed. Right now, everyone lined up on his outside. He's still trying to stick the racing line. One car is off the grass. Make it two. Make it three. Taylor and a couple other drivers. One car upside down. Bunovic upside down. Fernandez in the sand. The leaders having massive trouble. Let's take a look at this. This is from the 27 that started off. Salas, he hit the back end of Bunovic, heading into Ascari, and both of them wrecked in the as a result of the trouble. And Fernandez had nowhere to go. He went straight into the back of Bunovic's car there. He was on the racing line. And then it was a three-wide fight for the leads of the race. And as we go live there, side by side, and it's Robert Hartley that's found himself fighting for the lead with Pavel Simonet there, who was the leader as they crossed the line. What about three wide? It looks like Salas is still in the fight. He's not got too much damage. Behind them, here comes Torres as well. Two by two into turn one. Side by side, Hartley with the preferred line. Still two by two. Semantic tries to squeeze Hartley off the racing line. Hartley clips the sand, goes back single file. Torres goes to third, Salas to fourth. No penalties yet for that incident. Haro still in fifth position. Hagner now into the sixth spot. But man, oh man, what is it with Hartley in finding ways to dodge big ones? We've seen that at Mount Panorama. We've seen that last week for race victory. He now gets Torres. dive bomb for second. Good move there from Torres. Very opportunistic. Got it done very quickly and decisively. Harley's now suddenly on the back foot trying to fend off Salas as well. So Torres has taken a big advantage of this. We saw him going up the inside of two Lesmos. Suddenly he's fighting for second place. Yep, right now one of the bigger movers in this field at the moment. And but Semantic, Semantic plus 13, starting at 13th I should rather say. Now is leading after all of that. And this is getting interesting. This is the pleasure of drafting tracks. We talk about some ch chances to see drivers we might not see too often or might have the chance to see different strengths in the series compared to the technical tracks. And Semantic having his best run of the season so far for Trident Racing now in the league. Yes, certainly. 
And uh, we're seeing Hartley come back at Torres. And if he just single out that championship, Torres needs to finish ahead of Hartley. He's uh, 26 points behind him already. He needs to start eating into that gap if he wants to win this championship. Hartley's gone too deep. And he's hit Zamanek there on the entry to Parabolica. Oh, cars are spinning Hartley too. Lindroff is off the racetrack as well. He bobbled hard, mate. Had contact from Taylor. So two different situations happen at the same time. First with Hartley up the road for second, then Lindroff getting hit by Taylor. It was a chain reaction first off with Lindroff. This was as everyone was checking up for what happened. He corrects to the left, sends an R hard off the racing line. But the reason they checked up, Hartley trying to make a move for second, trying to get around Torres who had significant left door damage. He got hit, he hit the car in front and sent it wide. He hit the back end of Semanic and is now at the back end of the lead group that's been all bunched and broken up. Salas is now off the racing track though. He was in seventh position, just entering turn one as we showed the replay. He elected it to pit this past time by as we're inside the window. Well, <laughs> let's get a replay of uh, Salas. This is... Earlier yep, he, on, just a lap or so ago. Yeah, he elected to pit along with many others, and this is an interesting strategy. The earliest we've seen much of the season, we've seen drivers elect to pit. The window is about 25, 30 minutes in this series, and many drivers said, you know what, craziness, more craziness going on in turn number one. That looked like one of the huge jazz cars, as well as I think that was Kenny Brady who was spun around there. Yes, yeah, certainly. Let's go back to the lead. Sermonek, he still holds it despite that contact. He's got a bit of damage to his rear end. Torres behind him has found himself in second. And with the damage to his front left, Ari Harrow's got a clean car there in third. Johnny Hagner is up into fourth place. I finally got the first name right on the first try. Uh, and then back in fifth place is Robert Hartley. How much damage does he have? Because he went into the back of uh, Simonek with pretty decent force. Yeah. And he's got a fair bit of damage, but he's holding on. He's just on the outer reaches of the slipstream, and he doesn't appear to be losing too much. If he comes down and pits, he'll get the fast repair as well. Uh, speaking of which, everyone here in this train will get a fast repair when they pit. And we go back to P9 for another big battle. All the late cars you just seen moments ago have just elected a pit. Will these drivers in this fight elect to come down? Arvaloni looking to follow along with Lindroff. They also fall in for the pit stops. Clifford Evan also in. Brandon Hawken also ducks down. All the leaders in the top 11 have pit this time by. And with the way it has gone so far, not really surprised. Seeger overrunning his pit box will lose some time. But one driver already off and away out of the boxes. That is Nico Kaku who is in 47. Check that. And more That's... cars having some collisions around the racetrack at this point. This has been a crazy, crazy race as they elect to come into the pit lane. It's, um... Yeah, it seems like a, a simple track on paper, doesn't it? But, like I said earlier, Simonek does come out in first. Hagner comes out second. Harrow third. Torres goes back to fourth. And Hartley stays fifth. As I said earlier, because it's so high speed, if you miss something by the smallest of uh, time margins, it creates a huge ramification. Hagner, how deep do you want to go to turn one? He overcooked it by a long way. Just oh missed the back. And now Hartley... Sorry, Salas is going to go around his outside. Torres is going to follow him. Can he get to the inside to cover before Hartley gets there? He's got a small winner to do it. He's not going to do it. Hartley's going to follow Torres through as well. And Agma throws away the benefit. He bounds in the pit stop phase and goes to the back of what will be the lead train. Remember for Presente, for Presente Salas, he tried the undercut. Gets him back in the lead group. It's again, though, going to be a difference of one lap on the fuel. He pit the same distance as the rest of the top four in terms of pit stop seconds. 21.3 to 22 seconds in the pit boxes for the top four drivers in this group at the moment. As we've already passed the halfway point, an estimated eight laps to go here at this point. What's going through your head as a driver? Because uh, it's been a crazy one. And Kim Stevens, mind you, in 48th has stuck around with the leaders as this is all shaped up. Yeah, 
that goes to show how much uh, trouble these guys are running themselves into. But yeah, as a as a driver, not much of a driver I am though. But um, <laughs> you're just trying to stay out of trouble, aren't you? Because you, you're seeing people fall off the track left, right, and centre around you. You don't want to be that next person, um, especially someone like Hartley who has already made a mistake. He may be a little bit more conservative now on the brakes, and it might affect some of his manoeuvres um, in the coming stages of the race before we get to that final stage. So. Um, it might calm down for a few laps, but uh, if it does, I dare say it won't be for long. Let's go back to P16, heading down the uh, penultimate straight. Yeah, you're looking at this fight right now. These drivers looking to battle for points at the moment. They're passing Lee Martin, who appears to be near the end of his fuel. He's been trying to stretch it and chunking at 75 miles an hour at the moment through Parabolica. They've made the move by him. Right now, the fight is side by side between Watts and Wallace. This is for the first position outside the points. The car they're trying to keep up with is Jackson Robinard in the 50 machine. The battle battery tender machine will now try and block the top line. The A51 racing machine will work to help as the car below them looks to try and dive at Travis Wallace. Looking to get into 15th position, has the preferred line into the first chicane takes it away in the 86. Yes, good move there, and um, out front, Joni Hagner, who, uh, I must correct, it wasn't Hagner that made the mistake, it was Ari Harrow that made the mistake there, coming off the um, pit stop phases there, so apologies there to uh, both drivers and any confusion. Hagner, he's very much still at the front, he's uh, very much on the bumper of Powell Simonek now, heading through the first of the two Lesmos. And uh, heading down into the uh, into, into, on the run into Ascari, pardon me, he might just about close up close enough to make a move. Certainly into Parabolica is going to be close enough. Whether he wants to is a whole other story. As we said earlier, as we've seen with so many tracks, where slipstream is so important, you don't really want to be that leading car heading into um, the all important straights in the final lap because it will be a change of lead. There's no way to defend it. You cannot block. You uh, you get make to you get to make one move. You can make moves to uh, snake the uh, train and lose the slipstream from the cars behind. But you cannot block other cars. So you cannot really defend the uh, all-powerful slipstream. P9 is uh, providing some good action too. Stephen yep. Van Opstel, Clifford Eben, Christopher Taylor. They're heading down towards Parabolica. The reason why that we've seen going to this, Taylor got passed by that effect of the slipstream Ryan by those two drivers in front of him. The teammates of Evan and Van Opstro just drove around him on the right side on the run up to Ascari. And now they're looking to work together to pull away here. So Taylor, after being one of the drivers at the edge of the top 10, has some aero damage to move in to deal with at the moment and right now is looking to try and get a run to work his way back inside the top 10. The big one on the left side of the track. Huge shot side by to side the side back lead. end. As the leaders go side by side, up and just in front of them, Semenik able to hold on, Hagner to second, Salas up to third. It didn't quite work out for Hagner. He had the inside for the first corner, but the outside at turn two almost cost him a spot to Salas in spot. Uh, instead, it was from attack to defense for him. Now he's going to have to defend into the Della Roggia. Salas goes to the outside. Torres goes for the inside. And Torres goes by. Can he go by both of them? He gets into the left rear of um, Joni Hagner. Hagner bouncing across the curb. Holds his position. Uses some of the gravel on the exit of the Della Roggia. It seems as though he's escaped without a slowdown. But that's Torres now up into third. And Simonek has opened up about a nine car length advantage. He's still going to be in that slipstream range, though. He needs some more fighting behind him to truly get out of the uh, trouble zone. Yeah, only about a second ahead at the moment in this lead group as we now head down one of the second best drafting sections of this race trap. Hagner has enough distance. Torres not able, able to hold on for the time being. Salas not with the run quite yet. Everyone staying single file inside this lead group. Should note Fernandez. With the fast repair, with the timing that he had to take that fast repair in tow, he's still in seventh position. He is the leader of group number two at the moment, about four or five seconds behind of sixth position. And, 
and Christopher Taylor just having an issue, it appears, in the 11 machine. Or the 11th position, rather. He was side by side with Nico Arbilomi before his race went puff. Let's take a look at P number 25 at the moment, though, right now. Andrew Horsley currently from 57th position up to 25th. One of the major movers in this field. We got drivers in this grouping who have gone up 30 plus positions. You've got right now Horsley make a 24th, pardon me. You got Megola who started 42nd right in front of him. You got Apollo who started 37th in the position in front of him. And you got George Fike that is just in front of them in the machine. You see it just at the edge of your picture right now in the 09 machine, 46th to 22nd. Some drivers taking a major advantage of the attrition today, Ryan. Yep, and sometimes that's all you need to do if you qualify badly, just hang back a little bit. And if you start at the back, it's not always a bad thing because you can stay out of that trouble, dictate your own pace. And um, as we've seen today, it's been an absolutely manic race. A lot of drivers running into trouble, and the guys at the front have not been immune to that. No one's been immune. But it seems that this man has been. He's moved his way up into 33rd from 56, Rachel Williams. I said this man... I think this woman, I apologize, I said it before I saw the name, let's go back to P4, uh, this is Vincent Salas. Yes indeed, right now looking to work last time enter, entering the Del Rogia with Torres, they are losing a little bit of time at the moment compared to the top two, but... The fastest car on the track again are seventh on back at this point with five estimated laps to go and about 10 minutes on the clock by the time they reach the stripe here. What is the move to try and get the victory as Salas has the bubble that time by heading out of Ascari? Yeah, that's not the move. Don't run right through Ascari because you will lose a position down into Parabolica unless you're really lucky and you balk the car behind you in the process of that mistake like Salas did. It also helps that Hartley doesn't want to pass him. He wants to push him further up and get both of them as a result closer to Torres, Hagner and Simonek out front. But if the leader does that, you can guarantee he's going to be under all sorts. That's the move. If you're the leader, don't make a mistake in Ascari. If you're the car behind, set yourself up so you're about two car lengths behind heading through Ascari. Because come the end of that penultimate straight, you're going to be at the maximum speed you can be in terms of getting the maximum slipstream effect and you should be able to breeze right by them all going to plan uh it often doesn't quite go to plan like that though yeah that's how things potentially could come to grasp here right now cars nearly bumping and banging this time for the first cane as they continue to shuffle on inside this draft still in it under five estimated laps to go under 10 minutes on the clock Next battle again is still in P number 7 where Fernandez is now getting shuffled on a little bit because you got Nicholas Berger and Clifford Eben who both want to go and that time they were able to make a move. Fernandez let them go on the corner entry it appeared as he has dropped back to the ninth position and the lead group has gone in the second group has gone from five cars to just three. Indeed it has and uh, Hagma's under pressure from Torres, they were side by side momentarily back up in this battle for P2, there's action everywhere, so I don't know where to look here, and uh, we're doing our best to keep up and show you everything as it happens, they've just sorted themselves out now though and Hagner retains P2 from Torres and Simonek again has a small buffer, but it's not enough, he's still going to be caught by these guys in just a few seconds time by the time they get down to Parabolica and Torres is just keeping half the car out of the slipstream. Just having a look at all, oh, Robert Hartley did a fantastic job to avoid the back of Salas in front, but that's a costly mistake. He's going to lose the position to Ari Harrow. He's got to tuck in behind him. Harrow, a big slide there, coming off Ascari, hurts his momentum, and these two are going to have to work well together to claw their way back up to Salas' uh, rear bumper now. Yeah, they're still inside the slipstream, but this is going to be difficult now. They don't have a lot of time to try and make a move. Coming towards 7 minutes and 40 seconds, this time of the exit of Parabolica. Hegner in second, still Torres third. Salas is still in fourth in position. But Semantics has still controlled the lead bump. 
Taking a defensive line this time down the front straightaway. Hagner makes the move to the left side. Side by side for the race lead. Will we go three oh. wide? Yes, we will. Torres takes it up the middle. Down into the first chicane. Torres outbreaks the field and takes the race lead. Heading into turn one with four estimated to laps to go. Semitic makes contact. Hagner hits him as well. Both of them check up as Torres runs away. Great move there from Torres. He uh, timed that perfectly. Was pinpoint accurate on the break too. And great job from Salas to uh, check up and not get involved as Simonek and Hagner made contact through turn two. Luckily, they should all be right to keep fighting. There wasn't too much contact there. Shouldn't be too much damage. Salas is on the inside. Oh, that was so tight. And Salas surely is going to get a slowdown oh. for that there. And Semantic just hit the incident point, just hit the 20 incident point limit. He is done, was one of the contenders all race long today. My goodness, bad timing for that, was a top five contender. And these drivers making their way down the down the second part of the field as we take a look to Hawking and Rindroff at the moment their 11th and 12th position on the racetrack here. Yes, they are, and um, sorry, excuse me. They're going to go side by side here as Brendan Hawking goes to the outside, heading down towards the sky. As the car stopped there on the run to a sky on the inside. As Arvalo sorry, Avalomni, Avalomi slots back in behind Hawking, and they sort themselves out. And um, I was wondering a few seconds ago why I suddenly couldn't see anything. It was because of that disqualification for Simonek, and that's incredibly unfortunate, isn't it? Because uh, he certainly could have won this race. He was the car scored as the leader last time by, but this time it's going to go to uh, to Torres. Hagner, Salas, Hartley, and Harrow. That's how it shakes out the top five. It's uh, shook it up a whole lot more, but further back, it's continuing to uh, spice up with that battle for P13. And looking at some of the battles right now, including that position for 13th, Robin Art, Art still looking to hold on. This is at the edge of the points now. Make it inside the points now for Robin Art, Wallace, and Watts. So they're fighting for the best points finish they can get here. Remember, top 15 earn points in this series. They're bump drafting down the straight. Watts wants to make the move on both of them. Heading into the first chicane and does. He moves himself into P number 13. But at the moment, with all that shuffling that happened, the lead group is still separated into two small packs, we should note, with about two and a half estimated laps to go here. That was a perfect slingshot there from Watts down the main straight. Unfortunately, he now potentially could get slingshotted back through Curva Grande. They uh, thought about three wide. And oh, contact and hard into the fence goes Jackson Rebelard at the exit of Curva Grande into the fence on the outside. And that is his race done in very spectacular fashion. Let's go back to the front. That's unfortunate for the number 50 machine. It started in 32nd. But Torres has been reeled in by Hagner. Giving him a shot is Hagner this time heading towards Ascari. Backs off a little bit early on the brakes. Again, that is a saving fuel method you can do in these MX-5s. With about three and a half minutes to go on the clock. It's going to be tight though in terms of the time. And remember the lap times. Two minutes and 16 seconds in the lead group at the moment. And that timing can, de can determine when these drivers elect to make the one last gasp for the race win. Salas got a big run just behind this top two, elected to bottle it back up with Hartley still in the fourth position, and Harrell still in fifth. I have a feeling the race winner might not be the person that starts the final lap in either of the top two positions. It's uh, going to come down to the final lap. There's no doubt about that. As they cross the line, it says on the clock, two minutes 52 to go. So they should get two laps, including this one, to finish this race. As look at this, three wide for P2. Look at Robert Hartley. I thought he might be able to go from fourth to first with that one. Decided that second place was good enough. Salas goes to third. Hagner falls to fourth now in front of Harrow. 
right now looking on board with the last driver in this train, the 11 of Artie Howell for off track racing, looking to come home with this one. Still about an estimated 1.7 laps to go up on the board, very tight in terms of the timing. Torres is still up in front of this group, while Harold still looks to try and fall in the tire traps of Hagner at this moment. Question's going to be who's going to come away with the victory at this point. Hartley looking to go back to back here at Monza. He still holds on to second spot and falls behind Torres with a lap and a half estimated to go. On oh, Salas made a mistake there through the exit of the first place. But ran wide and caught some of the gravel. Can't be making mistakes now. You're costing yourself valuable meters. In a race where meters could decide the finish and the winner of this one. Hartley's going to be in prime position to make a move on this lap. Whether he wants to make it is a whole other story. It's the white flag when they come to the check, when they come to the start finish line. Torres, what does he do? How defensive does he want to go on this lap? Does he want to be in the lead of the race? Does he hope that someone's going to go in front of him? We're going to answer so many questions in the next about six kilometers of racing as they uh, all try and grab that slipstream off Torres who slowly ekes the car back to the left to take the ultimate racing line for Parabolica. Hartley gets closer and closer but not close enough and it's going to come down to the final lap. Should note Dylan Alt, who was making his debut race for Proximity Racing, had a technical issue, is now off the track, was in the top 10 before or so. But these drivers now will reach the final minute on the clock and get the white flag up of the stand. Hartley still in second, Torres looking to defend, heading to the first chicane. Salas getting help from Hagner with the bump trap. Hartley with the run for Excite Racing on the left side of the racetrack. Can he get the run and complete it off on the top side? They fight side by side into the hard-breaking section. Hartley takes the race lead. Still a two-thirds of a racetrack to go. Great move there from Hartley. He was as late as he could possibly be on the brakes. It seemed like Torres just jumped on the brakes a bit harder at the end of the braking zone and let himself slot in behind Hartley, knowing there's more opportunities to get the lead back. Like this one here. He looks to the outside. What becomes the inside for Della Roggia? And he's still there on his left rear. He taps the brakes and tucks back in behind him. He wants to wait to make his uh, move to take the lead back. Just a little bit longer is behind them. Getting some of the gravel as Joni Hagner still tucked up behind Salas. They're about five car lengths off this. As now to the inside goes Joni Hagner on Salas. And they're side by side and they're ruining their chance of a fight for the lead. As he finally gets through, they've lost valuable time to the top two. They lost about four or five car lengths, but coming towards Ascari they go. Torres looking to time it up. He got a major run last time heading to the Della Roggia. Will we be able to make the move this time on the inside? Goes to the left side of Hartley heading towards Ascari. Hartley gives him the space, lets him drive on by. Lap traffic ahead and David Ayers. They head to the final corners. Traffic moves to the left side of the circuit. Hartley moves towards the exit of Ascari. Can he get the run heading into Parabolica? Tries to go defensive, does Torres. Right along the right side. Hartley, he'll have to try and get it done on the outside of Parabolica for the victory in round number six of the Big C's MX-5 Challenge. Side by side at the Monsaini circuit. Sliding up is Torres, trying to give the pinch. Both of them slow up. Here comes Hagner behind them. Side by side, Torres gives the squeeze. Checker flag waving up at the stand. Who's it going to be at the stripe? The winner at Monza by 5-100 a second is Torres. He wins it at the Monza Ini circuit. What a finish there. Torres did exactly what he needed to do to win that race. The help from Hagner at the end proved beneficial and he wins as we go further back this is the battle for the minor placings and it's going to be won out by Travis Wallace over Christian Lindrock there for P number 16 and oh, P12 sorry and the reason why it's P12 Vicente Salas ran out of fuel he was in the top three, and the reason he wasn't getting the run, he ran out of fuel and came home in 14th position as a result. Remember, he tried the one-lap undercut and ran out at the wrong time. 
Seeger trying to come home with the recovery drive. Was a driver inside the top 15. Instead, he'll try and fight along and come home inside the top 25. P21 is where he comes home right behind Peter Magoa in this race. Maxime Bunovic, one of the contenders early on, comes on 22nd. Man, oh man, it was an exciting race, though. 43 drivers will make it to the checker flag in this one today here. And, and eight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, here is Rachel Williams crossing the line in the end to claim what will be a 28th place finish from 56 on the grid. That's a fantastic drive there through all the drama. Finishes exactly in the middle of the field after starting from uh, almost last place. Yeah, indeed here. Still some drivers looking to come across the stripe here. Shane Cameron, 36. Liam Sheenan, 37. James Sharp, 38. Fernando Segoa will be one of the last to come across the stripe on the lead lap. Everybody else one lap down or more in this one. But an exciting one at the Monsignini circuit today. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your post-race coverage presented by my presented by our sponsors. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel for Big C's MX-5 Challenge Action.
Welcome back everyone to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Big C's MX-5 Challenge. As you look at the turning point presented by Turn Racing for today, and our turning point today, the incident between Maxim Bunovic as well as Vincent, Vicente Salas that shook up the entire complexion of this race here, Ryan. With pit strategy, with how the finishing order went, how the lead group shaped up, that changed everything and how everyone approached the strategy for today's race. It did. It took out a number of big players in the race as well. It uh, was a spectacular crash. I'll give it that as well. 10 out of 10 for style points, but it certainly changed the race. Salas, he pitted as a result of that crash on that lap. And in the end, he ran out of fuel right when it mattered. The man that won the race, Torres... He managed to find his way through that crash, as did Robert Hartley, Joni Hagner. They all found their way through because uh, they're in the right place at the right time. Some of the guys we thought at the start, they might win. They were involved there and uh, definitely the turning point. Absolutely. The turning point is presented by Turn Racing. Merge the gap between sim, sport, and motorsport and turn racing. Turn carries a wide variety of steering wheels to suit any of all of your needs. From advanced sim racing wheels to practical street wheels, you can surely have something for you. Check it out at TurnRacing.com as you look at your results here on the Minus 273 post-race show. Torres comes home with the victory, his second of the season from 12th to 1st, followed by Robert Hartley. Yoni Hagner finishing third with Ari Harrell in fourth spot. Steven Van Alpstro came home in fifth, started 19th, while Nicholas Berger started from 22nd, came home in sixth. Clifford Evan comes home in 7th, Brandon Hawken in 8th, with Nico Arvidlomi in ninth. Rounding up the top 10, Christian Lindrop. Travis Wallace just missed out on that top 10 finish, coming home in 11th. Owen Watts was up 27th to 12th, we saw, we saw a fantastic there, two double pass from him late in the race, 26th to 13th was Caleb Patry. Salas running out of fuel, finished 14th in the end, Fernandez involved in that turning point, finished 15th, Kaneko finished in 16th, up from 46th to 17th was George Fight. what a drive from him, oh, 57th to 18th, it just gets better, Andrew Horsley there behind in 18th place, then it was Esco Latinami in 19th and rounding out the top 20 was uh, Magula. Giannis Seeger came home in 21st with Maxim Bunovic, one of the contenders in the pole sitter today, coming home 22nd. Pablo Loves came home in 23rd with Adam Marek starting and finishing in 24th. DJ Arn Centrini started in 11th, had trouble early on, finished 25th. Reynold Rowan Hubert in 26th, Greg Savoy in 27th. Rachel Williams from 56th to 28th, shout out to her in this race. A good run from her. Con Corentin Corentin Derboy, I should rather say, 29th, with Simon Apolding rounding up the top 30. 31st was uh, Prem, so he started 50 seconds, so a pretty good drive there as well. It was Senkowski finishing 30 seconds ahead of Lee Martin, Shane Cameron. Uh, James Sharp finished in 35th. Signoretto finished in 36th with Liam Sheng in 37th, who started 60th, so that's still a very fantastic drive too. Uh, Nico Kako finished in 38th. He was the final driver on the lead lap, then the first of the drivers a lap down. Michael Derby in 39th and Thomas Geisler in 40th. 41st, David Ayers in that position. Some of the notables in the back part of the field. Powell Semantic four laps down 45th. Dylan Owen in his debut was a top 10 racer. Had technical issues finishing 48th. Justin Hall from Hugh Jazz Motorsports finishing in 49th. Along with Alex Comfort, Kenny Brady in 56th. Logan Clampett, trouble early on, finishing 18 laps down 59th. Nicholas O'Short did not make the start. 60th overall. Again, we're tuning, you're watching the minus 270 post race show, whether it's on the real track or the virtual track, minus 273 has one goal in mind to produce the best quality racing gloves to get the job done. With unmatched comfort, durability, and style, their gloves will leave your old ones in the dust. Find out how they can help you by visiting minus 273.biz. We're standing by with our third place finisher, Yoni Hagner, with a good run today and in the conversation. Started 16th, came home in third. How are you feeling after what was a crazy race up at the front? Well, uh, this track is like uh, how well you can u use your fuel <laughs> yeah, and uh, save a bit and keep your car in one piece and not get uh, <coughs> any unnecessary incidents. 
How difficult was it to keep on fighting along with that because there was some of that trouble that happened up in front be just before the pit window. Plus, there was the fighting going on for the race victory. What was going through your mind as all of that was shaping up and all of the battling continued to form around? Well, uh, I was trying not to battle with anyone, just saving fuel and uh, not to lose any positions. And uh, if I get uh, like a easy spot to pass someone, I will take it. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, pretty, pretty like do not race or you will be raced. Or something like that. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, next race, we go off back to the U.S. side of things. Even more, where we go off to Road Atlanta. Your thoughts about that race track? Uh, one of the best tracks in uh, service. And uh, I think I will practice a bit more than uh, 15 minutes <laughs> before the race. Anyone you want to thank for being a part of your podium finish today? Uh, thank you for the off-track racing team for keeping good company in the, with, uh, during the race and uh, being good fellows. Thank you very much for the time. That was Johnny Hegner coming home in third today, started in 16th. Ryan, your thoughts after what was a crazy race? Well, yeah, pretty much. It was a crazy race. Um, had everything in it. We have that, the strategy gamble so to say from Salas. maybe it was forced a little bit by damage in that uh crash on the same lap but we saw that it didn't pay off we saw an incredible finish it was eight hundredths of a second in the end not separating the top two separating the top three which is um incredibly tight for a 40 minute race around a, a 5.6 kilometer racetrack and we saw great battling all race long it's a uh, it was a fantastic race to watch, to commentate as well, but also in terms of the championship. Robert Hartley is uh, starting to really assert himself now, and he's uh, can be incredibly hard to catch because he's opening up quite to a, a big lead. Yeah, he's lucky pretty prime for what could be his third championship title, but there's still a ways to go in this series at this point in terms of racing. Your quick thoughts before we say goodbye about Road Atlanta, the next stop on the schedule. It's going to provide a little bit of a change of pace in terms of uh, from slipstreaming here at Monza to uh, some more tight and twisty racing that we have here at... Uh... Sorry, let me start again. <laughs> it's going to be a big yeah. change of pace from the slipstreams of Monza to the uh, lower speeds and the tight and twisty track that is Road Atlanta. And in fact, the rest of the season has a uh, distinctly less streaming opportunities we've seen in the first half of the season so we could see some uh, different styles of racing a lot more changes for the lead uh, instead of drivers waiting till the last moments for the uh, action to erupt and um, it will be a fantastic race again because uh, as Journey said earlier it's one of the best tracks in the service absolutely agree and it's a fun track to drive as well a difficult one though especially in sector number two in that circuit but we'd like to thank gtr simulator sim racing studio and shh shifter along with turn racing and minus 273 for sponsoring today's racing action as well as the series title sponsor big c we'd also like to thank series organizer clifford evan for organizing what has been an eventful series and what was an eventful race today. We'd also like to thank the companies that provide our software and hardware up on your screen now for our broadcast, with additional thanks to Juve Long, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more for great work. Thanks to the team today and Ryan and Sean. If you'd like to find out more about the Global Sim Racing Channel, including its upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. Or you can check out our social media on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Don't forget to head over to our YouTube page and hit that big red subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a moment here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. The next race on the schedule sees us head to Road Atlanta for round number 7 of 9 who will come home with a victory. Make sure to tune in to the Global Sim Racing Channel at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time to find out next Sunday. You'll also have upcoming races for other series listed up on your screen. Make sure to check those out and mark them down in your calendar. But until next time... Clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.